Self and Aging Committee for Tuesday, the 12th day of January, 2010. Power is on. I'm just waiting. Joined by Councilman Ed Reyes of the 1st District. And uh, we have our clerk who is going to get a high sign. You got the high sign? Ready to roll? First item we're going to, uh, is the nominee here? Uh, yes, he is. Okay. Address. Item num Call it, Madam Clerk. Thank you. And item number one is a communication from the mayor relative to the appointment of Mr. Murtaza Sanwari to the Human Relations Commission for the term ending June 30th, 2012. Uh, welcome and thank you for uh, taking the mayor's uh, call and the request to be on this commission. Tell us about yourself. Good morning. Thank you very much. Uh, Murtaza Sanwari, I am an immigrant to the United States been in the city of Los Angeles for well over 30 years, uh, have resided here. Um, I am currently working for Kaiser Permanente, have a master's degree in public health, involved with uh, community relations and uh, interfaith work. Great. How long have you been with Kaiser? Ten years. Ten years. Good. Mr. Reyes. Given the uh, fiscal realities of the city and the state and probably the whole world. Um, your role here in terms of as a commissioner, what priorities do you see or when you accepted this position, yeah. um, at least the invitation, uh, what thoughts ran through your head in terms of what you like to see occur on this commission? You know, I'd like to see, and there's been a lot of it, but I think we can continuously improve it, is open dialogue, facilitation, to, to continue to build an inclusive community. So ensuring equal rights, justice for all communities, safer neighborhoods, uh, and, and the relationship between the various religious, uh, ethnic, racial groups that exist. Uh, you know, there continues to be some tensions in that area. Hate crimes continue. So I think continuously improving that part of the work as well as continuing to build the relationship between the police and the, the neighborhoods and community policing. Uh, and maintaining that would be excellent. There's a moment in time when um, an incident occurs when there is, let's say, a gang-related shooting of a victim, the person, at least in my district and in, for the most part in the uh, high poverty areas, you have individuals who don't speak English, who do not speak English, and they are in a traumatic situation right at that moment. Uh, police come in, you have the victim, and fortunately, the, uh, we've had Human Relations Commission in the past organize some of the people of the cloth who are involved in, when they get called in to speak to the traumatized family, uh, the victim, because um, we found that certain folks would step up and intercede and weren't always of the best character or sus suspect in terms of how they uh, influence that situation at that moment of crisis and that's something I'd like for us to continue to focus on uh, especially when the victim's family doesn't speak English and you need that ability to understand okay what are my options what's happening to my son or daughter um, and I'm just hoping I'm sharing that with you so that maybe that's an area of concern that uh, we don't lose sight of because as it was picking up it was getting orchestrated we worked on that for about two years uh, the restructuring occurred, so bringing back that to focus for me would be a high priority, and I would appreciate anything you can do in that end. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you went to San Diego State? Yes, I did. Yeah, how'd you like that? I'm sorry? How'd you like San Diego State? I mean, that was... Uh, I enjoyed it. Yeah. Uh, my primary reason for going to San Diego was graduate school. Uh -huh. The reason I went pick San Diego was because of the healthcare organizations that were there at the time. Right. Uh, I wanted to be at the forefront of what was going on back in the late 90s, and so I chose San Diego, and my wife and I went down there and did our graduate work. Came back to L.A. knowing that my family was here and wanting to raise a family close to my family and stay in the city of L.A. So that's, that's the primary reason why I came back. Where do you go in undergrad? Uh, Cal State Northridge. Northridge. Where do you go to high school? Uh, Van Nuys. Van Nuys High. Yeah. Good. Uh, I think what Mr. Reyes said is so true. I think it's... Um, we're, we're, I, I don't know if there's a proper way to describe it, but everything's sensitive in the world now. But the sensitivities uh, uh, ease when hands are extended. And, and 
uh, eyes and minds are open to others. And I think educating people on those issues. Uh, and you mentioned about faith. Faith is an important factor. And there's a transformation of sometimes those issues that people need to understand other people's faith and respect them just as much as they respect their own. Right. Or if they don't, I hope all people have faith, even if they don't have faith in whatever traditional faith is, whatever it is, that have faith that the sun is going to rise tomorrow is very important. So I look forward to uh, coming to council. When are you coming to council, Madam Clerk? Uh, this morning. So uh, I, I think a little extended uh, passion, uh, thoughts uh, when you speak to council would be good. I know uh, all members will be excited about your contribution that you give to the city of Los Angeles. I thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Next item. Uh, We're going to hold the next item. Yes, please. All I right. believe the commissioner. Next is on item the after the next item. And then the third item is a communication from the mayor relative to the request for withdrawal of the appointment to the Human Relations Commission. And I okay. believe the mayor's letter requests that that item be received and filed. Yes, I saw that letter. Received and filed. Next item. And item number four is also a communication from the mayor relative to the request for withdrawal of the appointment of also a commissioner. And that request from the mayor also requests the receive and file. Yeah, I like Sharon. No, I don't know if I want to accept this, there, but I guess we have to. No. So order, Mr. Reyes, you're okay? Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you. Item five. Item five is a motion, Parks Alarcon, relative to recommendations for transferring a median located on Vermont Avenue to the CRA for purposes of developing the Vermont median park, possibly vacating or leasing the site, and other related matters. This was also referred to the Public Works Committee, and this is something Mr. Parks wants. Hello. Good morning. Mike Cantor, Deputy City Engineer with the Bureau of Engineering. And Mike. would like to, I think the, the key related to this motion and the request of the city engineer is the is the process. The, the motion instructs us to report back on uh, for recommending a mechanism that would transfer this property. And I think what we need to do is we just need to initiate the process. Through the process, we will determine exactly what what will happen. And I think the street vacation process is that mechanism to initiate that. So. Uh, I, I mean, the recommendation is that we we go forward and we have the CRA uh, initiate that process. All right. Have you worked with Mr. Parks's office on this? You yeah, particularly? I, I've been involved with with this. From is this uh, simple or is it something it's needs? Complex. It's complex. It's very complex. Um, you know, there's going to be an issue with entitlements and zoning. Meaning, is it will it be a median? Will it be a park? They're different. Things. I got it. I got. It. Let me ask you a question. It's Sixth and uh, uh, Beaudry. You know where Unical used to be. It's a theater now. There's a there's an area that used to be uh, a park, but now it's tied into that property. You're familiar with that old traffic island on Beaudry? You know where that one is? It's inside the fence. Okay. Years ago, I looked at that as possibly a sister city park, but I worked for then Mayor Reardon. Uh, but then I found out it was City Street almost. Mm -hmm. So then it becomes that complicated problem. So we turn went other places we ended up at the at the uh, another location right. so is this that same type of thing where it's an actual what what the city has which is which is a good thing is a part of this 185 foot right of way in Vermont there's a 60 foot strip that the city owns in fee which is different than the norm normally the city just has easement rights and the adjacent owners own the land in fee so there is a strip that we own in fee, but the purpose for that land is for street purposes. So this is the area where Vermont used to have the streetcar, and then this is the inner roadway between what is the existing curb and then the parking meters, two parking meters on the side. It doesn't say on the report here right. that I have what's the cross street. So uh, yeah. well, this was uh, it's essentially between Gage and Florence. Right. Okay. And it, it was an old rail right of way that right. the city acquired in fee in 1955. So what, what we would need to do, I, I, I think that w it's hard to say what will actually be doable, right. but we should initiate a process. And the process says that to move the city and Jimmy to report back in 45 days with recommendations on the mechanism to convey this transfer, right. whether it is possible or not. You could report back on that and locate it in the CRA zone on Vermont Avenue for developing a median park. 
I guess it would be a big bump out in other visual terms. Also, that engineering and street services in the city attorney and other affected city departments cooperate with the CRA for successful application 84, uh, if it is possible to do. So you got work ahead of you. Yes. So yeah. and I, I the start yeah. the best thing to do would be you know I I recommend the CRA initiate a street vacation for this. You know, we, we had the Bureau of Engineering had sent a letter back in July right. saying that, you know, we will provide land development, real estate, surveying services once again with all BOE costs and fees paid by CRA. Right. So we we've said we will we will help. We we will provide our services. We just I think it's time to maybe initiate the process. What's the end goal? What is the end goal? What what is it be, what's being achieved here? Well I think that the the end goal for the those that are that are going to be the owners of the park and would like I think it would be to find that this is excess right of way to vacate it and then possibly designate it as open space so it would be like a zone change to make it a park I think okay so you just want to make dead space into something functional right and it's just sitting there and we want to activate it and we want to proceed by starting the legal steps to take ownership of that piece of land and design another right of way so that it's according to public safety standards but allows us access to that piece of land. Mm -hmm. yeah. And but just saying my process is this is the triggering mechanism to begin that. Yeah. Is that am I hearing you correctly? Yes. Yeah, it, it's there's a lot of things involved to to be able to say this is excess right of way, meaning it's not needed for street purposes. Right. We've got to get through that. We we have to decide are we going to, is it going to be a park or a landscape median? And that'll, there could be some entitlement. And that's issue. part of the process. That's part of that process. Okay, so now we just want to put that on the plate, so to speak, and offer it to the community and the council based on their direction and get to another concluding point. Exactly. But this gets it to that first first base, if you will. Yes, and once you, we... You've seen the motion. You could accept the motion. Yes, I I, th I think yeah, that it instructs uh, you to report back, so it doesn't mean we're approving it. You you're telling us there may be some complications. It's not as easy as it seems. Right. And actually, who would then maintain it? So, I feel comfortable going forward to have them report back, yeah. but knowing there's some challenges and the costs related to it, make sure that the community redevelopment agency can fund whatever is necessary, and it works out. And there's no substructure that would impede right. the city's ability, city's ability in the future to serve whatever's necessary in the existing pri pri public right of way. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, my only uh, assertion here is that let's find a way to do this as quick as possible. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes we get caught up in our own rules and we get tangled up in our own bureaucracies. And <laughs> there's a way to streamline this, make this happen sooner than later. I think the community will benefit for it. Right. Um, I've been through several of these types of experiences building out the light rail line and it's amazing how many departments pop up and say well you can't do this you can't do that versus a large saying well this is the way to get it done quicker that right. would be the latter that we could hear from our departments so look forward to the uh, report back and trying to find a streamlined process that makes this happen and okay, Council, Michael. Yes. Council members just to note Cheryl Benarsh in the CLA the Prop 84 applications are due in early March and I believe the CRA needs to have proper site control which is what the street vacation or the lease of the property would do so if you're instructing the BOE to report back you may want to request that they report, report back sooner than 45 days okay let's, let's make it problem. 30 days or better yet let's make it the next meeting when's the next meeting just to give us a general idea is it intent by the councilman of the district to create park open space from an old street that is it doesn't impede traffic this is a visionary type of move, uh, and there's probably a lot of reasons, as Mr. Reyes said, one could say no, but there's a lot of reasons you could say yes and potentially would have a benefit if there's an application. So you could come back and you could say, uh, have you met with the council office yourself? Well, well the, the meetings have been with a large group, you know, with the architect who's designing the project, CRA, the council office, and others. There's been a number of meetings. Right, but we, but you still hold the keys because you're the you're the property owner in essence. You're the city's representative, Bureau of Engineering. You vacate streets. Right. Could a could, could a uh, revocable permit be used? Would that get them? If a revocable permit was granted, would that get them further down the line? Because vacation sometimes takes time. Right. Well, that goes back to this issue of uh, the city does not really need anything to landscape a median, meaning 
weaken landscape medians under our existing authorities so that's once again what what is this going to be what did the and i'm sorry uh i don't believe a rep is a representative for the council of us here there's no representative council of us and i'm getting a chance to talk to miss parks i did make a call in and then miss schechter do you have anything to report on that and we did talk to mr park's office on this issue no, okay all right okay so uh basically what you could right away go move forward and curb and gutter issues resolve and make a median they could be from the existing from the sidewalk to what would be the curb of the existing vermont avenue right you could do that now without any hoop to jump through what we do is we would engineering would work with the department of transportation to find out what you know what is necessary right in terms of the roadway the uh -huh. 60 foot strip that the city owns in fee isn't in the center it's not centered it's what's on the ground in the in railway what's on the ground is there concrete or is there dirt well there i, I would have to ask somebody from the, the cra to maybe discuss what's there have you seen it i've only seen aerial photos aerial photos from the top of city hall <laughs> okay. All right. So let's come back in two weeks. So you know a little more. I'm with the Will Sipes with the community reader. Yeah. Well, how long you been with the CRA? Uh, three months on Friday. Good. So don't hesitate to come up. Don't hesitate when there's an item. Sit in the chair. Good job to come up. Give us a story, Will. Um, so the we've been working closely with Councilman Park's office and also very closely with the community as part of the Prop 84 process. Um, right now, it's a very small median that's. Uh, you know, got some grass and dirt. You got a picture in there to help us at all? A picture of the median? Yeah. Um, I have, I have a, a map. rendering. Yeah, if you want to look at of it. Of what kind of the... Lisa, will you get that from uh, Exhibit A? You, you would like to see what's existing, right? Well, I got an idea. I mean, I've been up and down Vermont a yeah. hundred times. I actually don't have a picture of the existing... Yeah. Don't have it to memory. Yeah. But Do you have a, a sketch there? I, I have a, an old sketch of a plan we did prior to going through some some more work well, that gives us a little idea we could see this site right. I think we'll take one more minute on this item before we move forward but I'm curious that's too. okay <laughs> I have other copies yeah <laughs> uh-huh okay so it's the center street park it will be yes in the center of the street yes 60 feet wide um, there wouldn't be any active recreational uses in there you know no ball playing things like that there would be a kind of a multi-use path and passive recreational spaces is the the plan right now this is off of gauge it's between gauge and manchester is the full extent of what we're looking at for this first phase it would you know depending on what we're able to get through prop 84 it probably extends somewhere that's pretty park for area too. Engage in Florence. Yeah. Um, the population density in this pocket, do you know what it is? I don't know the exact number off the top of my head, no. But it's it's a very dense area. Yeah, 20,000, 30,000 per square mile. So this would be similar to the park the, under the uh, pinmanship of Mr. Reyes at Maine and, uh, right. and uh, Alhambra, Maine and... Uh, is Alhambra right there? What is that street? Not Alhambra. It's by Felipe's. I went oh, yeah. past yesterday. Yeah, off of, yeah. Uh, so it's the center street. I got it. Yeah. Ord. Ord. Yeah. Yeah. Ord so, so right now, you know, the street has the um, the parking lanes on either side. It's it has. Right. And so those would be removed as part of a plan we've worked talked about with DOT. Just to widen. To and to allow to widen the median to 60 feet and still keep the same number of uh, lanes of traffic in each direction on either side of the median and you would have a bike lane also on either side and what's the dominant uses on both sides of commercial this? commercial yeah is it like mom and pop shops or Mostly. high retail Mostly? Dominantly mom and pop shops okay i know this area pretty good this is a great concept good okay good all right uh so uh what do you what do you learn this morning your first time testifying there will um, come up, come up here sooner. Yeah, come up here sooner. And also, I have graphics all the time. We'll see you in two weeks. Just yeah. to have this on the the burner. Is that uh, Madam CLA? Do you request it uh, every two weeks so we keep the pressure on? Okay. And if you can have just for me the the profile of the neighborhood, density, unemployment, poverty levels. Uh, let's get a profile of what's surrounding the area. 
Very good. Thank you very much. Welcome. All right. Next item, Madam Clerk, continue two weeks to the next meeting, which may be an off-site meeting. Is that correct? Thank you. At Alvarez Street mm -hmm. in the morning. Yeah. Would okay. you like to go back to item number two at this point? Item number two. Are we done with the main agenda? Uh, no, we have item number six also What's from the six? library. Well, we could take the... Uh, okay, you go. Okay. All right, yeah, just me, number, get the appointing. Let's get the appointing and then we'll do six. You know, I'm sorry. Uh, item one. Okay, two. item number two, two is a communication sorry. from the mayor relative to the appointment of Dr. Nazar to the Disabled Access Appeals Commission for the term ending June 30th, 2011. How are you? Fine, you excited? Yeah, of course. All right, good. Well, we have someone who is very passionate. Just give us your thoughts and we're going to approve it because we're going to council today. Is that right, Madam Clerk? Correct. Good. We know your family's here, which is very exciting to see your family. Thank you. Okay. Uh, well, good morning. Um, I'm here. Um, uh, uh, would you like me to introduce myself or? Yeah, just tell us a little about yourself and why you want to serve on this commission and how you're going to have the great skills to enhance the ability for challenges of people who have disabilities. Well, sure, yeah. Well, there are many elements that, uh, well, my name is Dr. Jameson. So I'm a chiropractor uh, from at the beginning. And uh, uh, there are many elements uh, why I'm qualified for this position. Uh, because of my background in healthcare as a chiropractor and uh, 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 having a degree in uh, law, uh, uh, having a degree in law and a master degree in international taxation, and my background as uh, being an independent medical examiner for the state of California uh, disability department, being a real estate broker, I believe that all these um, elements, um, they can help me to um, my education, my background, my experience can help me to um, do a better job. Uh, I'm, I'm sure nobody is perfect, but to do a better job to uh, resolve the resolution, to do research, uh, to ask friends, uh, to look around. Uh, with my background, I believe I can do more uh, and, and, help, uh, and help this committee. Well, we know you will, and you'll have this opportunity. I know uh, Mr. Reyes uh, wants to be supportive. I want to be supportive. I want to say thank you for so your... We'll Sorry, Mr. Reyes. I just want to say thank you for your contribution and uh, your presence here. Look forward to working with you. And we're going to vote approval right now and have you have a little more time in council. Thank you very okay, much. Okay, we'll Appreciate vote you. approval and we welcome your family. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Mr. Reyes. Okay. Thank right, you. Item six. Item six is a motion, Parks Cardinus, relative to the use of technology in the city's libraries, including Great. how technology could change the way the library system is managed the costs and benefits to new technologies and other related matters. Good morning. Good morning, Chairman Labange. My name is Martin Gomez. I'm sure. the city librarian. Happy How, New Year. Uh, happy New Year to you. How's the library? It's fine, thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Working you, hard. Yeah, everybody is. And did you get a chance to review this motion? Yes, I did. And what would your uh, opinions well, be? I'm a written res response for um, uh, the councilman, uh, Mr. Uh, Parks, uh, but in the meantime, I'd like to give you a synopsis of, uh, of what we're going to be saying. Essentially, the uh, Los Angeles Public Library has been in the technology uh, uh, area for a long time. Um, <clears throat> we have used our technology since 1991 in particular by providing uh, public access, um, uh, making ourselves accessible, I should say, on the World Wide Web since 1991. There are basically three areas that we provide technological uh, support. One is Internet access. Um, second is our digital collections. And the third area is actually um, uh, looking at um, providing um, computers in the libraries for the public to use. Um, one of the areas I wanted to cover is our uh, content. Um, a lot of this has to do with uh, what is available in digital print, so to speak. Right now, about 1% of our collection is in electronic format. That's a 8 million volume collection, so 1% basically is uh, in electronic format. Uh, over the last year, we spent about a million dollars in e-content. That means um, uh, audio books, it means e-books, it means e-video and e-music. Uh, versus about six million dollars in our print collection, so there's still um, a way to go. Um, we are getting very good use of our e-content, and uh, what we're able to purchase is really subject to what's available out there in the open market. 
The only area that we're really producing that is uh, our own digital content is our uh, collection to our uh, historic photos. Uh, and by the way, we've had a lot of increased uh, use of those photos on the Internet uh, over the web. People are not only looking at them, they're also purchasing them. So it's a nice little revenue stream for the Why library. Why they pull it off the web? Do they compensate the library department if they use it? Yeah. Right. Because I think there's the one thing that's important to look at that because they're valuable. I yes. was a, and still am a great friend of Carolyn Cole who retired from your service with Kathy Kabashi. Is Kathy still there at the library? I'm not sure. Uh, they too, years ago, just to let you know, Security Pacific Library, uh, closed, Security Pacific closed their library service. They gave all their archives and photos to uh, the library. When they looked at it, they found it really was one type of person of Los Angeles that was there, even though it didn't reflect the multicultural, multi-diverse Los Angeles. So those two librarians went out to the branches and asked the branch mm -hmm. patrons to bring in their wedding albums and all the, so you've got the shades of Los Angeles in essence. And it's really a great collection that has been there. We'd so, like to do more of that. A lot of that work is done now with uh, foundation funds. Foundation funds to look at that, but I also say if you could get compensated with someone, and I don't know how they do. I don't know how the L.A. Times does that, but we should try to find out how the L.A. Times does it. Not to say anything against the L.A. Daily News and Rick Orloff, if you're listening down there, <laughs> uh, but the, the L.A. Times and their photos have great history, and and I'm sure they try to. Mar Everybody's selling everything, so if we could sell that. You know, they could help you in your mission we are serve the people. Those items. Got it. Yep. Like there's a great poster of Elvis, which you should put out again. It says uh, he's reading a book, <laughs> and it's read. I, I bought the poster in your thing. It's Elvis' 71st I, I wasn't aware anniversary, of so we should find that poster and market it again. Back to you. <laughs> um, well, uh, we also offer wireless connectivity uh, in all of our branch libraries. Uh, we're also providing uh, access to the Internet in the library um, for those who don't have computers with about 2,200 uh, public access computers. And many of our branch libraries are doing a monthly training for the public who doesn't know how to use uh, the computers or access the Internet. Our e-content that I mentioned, we have about 11,000 e-books, about 6,000 e-audiobooks, which are, you know, you put them in your, on your MP3 or something and you can listen to the book being read to you. Uh, about 1.6 uh, thousand uh, e-videos and about 500 e-music. And we also are using, uh, we have podcasts now that are uh, produced uh, as a result of the Allowed series at the library. Right. Um, want to mention our, uh, just in summary, kind of the challenges that we've got. Um, certainly we've achieved some efficiencies through technology over the last uh, several years, um, but primarily in the back room activities, cataloging and uh, making things available uh, uh, through our catalog in particular. The content uh, issues are still evolving and a lot of battles going on between authors and publishers and the Authors Guild, etc., about digital rights. Um, uh, we're not a, a player in that, but certainly uh, right now for us, print is still king. We're circulating more print material than we are uh, electronic materials. The challenge for us, especially in these difficult physical times, is we're actually building dual collections. By that I mean we're building our print collections. We're also trying to keep up with the e-content collections as well. E-content, by the way, is a better um, bang for the buck in terms of turnover. Uh, in other words, the number of times that an e-book circulates versus the number of times a real book circulates, uh, it's uh, a little bit uh, about 7.5 times per year for an e-book versus about three times per year for In, in the United States or in the world, what library system is the best in this? Well, after Los Angeles Public Library? Yes. <laughs> Very good, Martin. I like that. And I know why the mayor hired you now. Um, I'll have to get back to you on that. I, uh, I think we're right up there with a, a lot of, certainly the Library of Congress has done a great job in that. Right. I was just thinking, too, if there's any way that I read more of the motion there, I mean, I don't want to compare it to Texas uh, mm -hmm. in a sense. They, there's uh, but I, I do believe there's some physical need to, but again, I'm 56, you know, and so I believe it's important to look at a book. But I know in technology, my son, yeah. who's 11, could tell me how to do anything, you know, on the technology method. Um, and I know some people are pushing textbooks to go this way. Uh, all that being said, I think there's a value in this. And uh, what would you want us to do on this motion? 
I think what we'd like to do is be able to give our report also to Mr. Parks. Uh, uh, uh-huh. and, um, is this supposed to go to Finance Committee, too, or is it just this committee? It was only referred to the Arts Committee. Oh, yeah. it was? Okay. That's okay. Let's do this. Why don't we all hold it? Because I think it's a very interesting topic, and I want to go online and learn a little more about some other facilities. And even, you know, when you even to look to the future, how could we make sure which branches in the regions are the highest and up-to-date for technology? So everyone across the city, there's an opportunity to get this. So let's continue this for two weeks. Uh, I have an opportunity for you to get to Mr. Parks and uh, brief him, and I'll talk to him with counsel as well, and uh, then then this would allow you to move forward and look at some of these options. It's an exciting area for us. Thank you yeah. very much, Mr. Labonge. You got it. Any other items? I complete. All right. This uh, concludes the meeting in 31 minutes. Thank you very much. We're uh, there. Madam City Attorney. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Officer, thank you. This meeting is adjourned.